إلا تنصروه فقد نصره الله إذ أخرجه الذين كفروا ثاني اثنين إذ ما في الغار إذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن إن الله معنا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To all the brothers and sisters tuning in at home to another episode of Abid al Today I'm honored to be in the presence of Brother Ya'qub Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah MashaAllah, Jazakallah khairan for joining me I know it's just been a very short time since we met, maybe a few days ago But I just wanted to grab this opportunity to do an episode with yourself and I just want to provide some context to the people who are watching at home about what we're going to talk about today, inshallah. Uh-huh. So coming from the UK, as both of us do, generally there's a lot of people who express an inter- interest to seek knowledge. I want to be a student of knowledge. Uh-huh. I want to seek knowledge. And many of them look at options of studying abroad. Mm. And really, within that capacity, there's two main places that people think about. And that is the University of Medina, where many want to go. And uh, the issue with that is that they have quite strict quite strict conditions in terms of the application process. You have to be below a certain age. And even then, many, many people apply, but not many people get accepted there. So a lot of people also look at the option of studying in Egypt. No. And you yourself have been in Egypt for, is it three years now? No, no. Yeah, around three years, yeah. Around three years, right? So I wanted to grab this opportunity to really talk about seeking knowledge in Egypt, just in case there's anybody at home who kind of wants to do a similar thing is thinking about doing it. What are the pros? What are the cons? What has your experience been like? Is that okay with you? Inni Allah, inshallah. Barakha, I really appreciate you doing Allah the, the episodes. I know my you're pleasure, my a pleasure. little bit reluctant, but I just I wanted to convince you to. No, no, my pleasure, my pleasure. Allah, Allah, very So, Still. you were born and raised in the UK? No, I wasn't born in the UK. Okay, fine. I was raised in the UK, like. Okay. I was raised, most of my life was spent in the UK. It was, in fact, maybe perhaps, I would say I traveled before, like in, the first country that I've been to in Africa was Egypt, in fact. Oh, really? The first country in Africa was Egypt. Now, so alhamdulillah, um, we've been there for a while. There's a lot to mention around e- about, about Egypt. Like in your right, when you say that Egypt is one of the places that brothers and sisters even, they consider when it comes to studying. Like, um, because countries like Saudi, there's, you can't just go. That's you right. know, you apply and then you wait for the application, whether you get confirmation or not. Whereas Egypt is more open. It's just what is preventing you from going is that decision. If you decide on going to Egypt, you can go. There's not really many things that can prevent you from. Okay, tell me about your thought process three years ago. So obviously, Tayyip, you, you were in the UK at the time, right before nah. you went to Egypt. Nah. And you thought of obviously Egypt as an option? Nah. I, I would say I was similar to most of the brothers and sisters, mainly brothers that decide on studying. The, yeah. first, the first idea that comes to mind is Saudi. Yeah. And That's I would right. say that perhaps is maybe because of close-mindedness where people are not really open to other opportunities. True, yeah. You know? So I followed the same procedure. I applied. Medina? Medina. Just Medina first time. Yeah. Medina, Medina, you know? Yeah, yeah. From the get-go. In fact, I remember a time where a brother that I know got accepted into the Jamia. And I messaged him. Yeah. And I said, Ya Akhi, Allahumma barik, you've been accepted. This is a while back. We're talking years ago. Oh. So I said, Ya Akhi al-Kareem, make dua that Allah also gives me a place in Medina. And he said something ajib. He said to me, Ya Akhi, I'll make dua that Allah gives you or he gives you what is good for you. I wasn't happy with that, <laughs> with that response. Medina, I went to Medina specifically. I said, I didn't say it to him, but he said that, why is he being a little bit stingy with the dua, you know? <laughs> Later on, I realized, subhanallah, يعني, you don't know where the khair is. Allah Azza wa Jalla says in the Quran, Asa and Takra wa Shayyan, wa Khairu Lakum, Asa and Tuhibu Shayyan, wa Sharu Lakum, you know? Something that you may feel that is good for you, perhaps is not where, what Allah Azza wa Jalla planned. As time went by in UK, I was very, I, be, I became very attached to the Arabic language. Mashallah. And if I try to think back, we had a Egyptian khatib in our area back yeah. in the UK, and I would be very fascinated in how he, in, in how he gives the khutbah. You know, no paper present in front of him, very eloquent, mashallah. That's where the love and the passion of the language actually just started to deepen. Time goes by, I realize, you know, the religion, you can't really understand the religion. If you don't really know the language, you will always be a foreigner to the language. I've been hearing these kind of statements. And why not, you know, how long would you want to be away from understanding the Quran directly and always rely on English translation, for example, you know? So these were some of the things that actually pushed me to actually try study the language. 
Yeah, yeah. I've heard, you know that point about a lot of brothers who really are fixated on Medina more oh. than anything else? Nah. It's a very, very common thing. It's very common. And a lot of them actually confuse the, uh, the means with the end. Nah. I don't know what I mean by that. The end is basically seeking knowledge. But the means they've just restricted to one place. They're restricted. Whereas in reality, there's many universities, many even universities. within Saudi, that you can nah, apply to, nah. let alone outside. SubhanAllah. It's what you constantly hear, you know. Medina and no one's really exposed to other opportunities. Yeah. Where they will apply and they will say back. If they don't really get anything, they'll say, I, I tried. My opportunities are limited. Yeah. But that's not the case. Alhamdulillah, I've been introduced to Egypt. A few brothers actually recommended it. And Alhamdulillah. In fact, I'll go further and say, if a person really wants to study the language, Allah, my experience is limited. Of course, I've only been to Egypt. But from what I've been hearing, is may perhaps even one of the best places to study the language. Right. I'm talking about the language. Even right. for those that go to Saudi, they always mention that they find that their language is quite limited because they don't really have that same, mm. that same, you know what I mean? The same approach. For example, in the Jami'at, and it's like a lecture based where the Sheikh is giving a lecture to hundreds of students in front of them. So you won't really have a direct contact with True. the teacher. Your practice becomes limited. Whereas Egypt, the focus is Arabic. The classes, if you, if you go to the classes, for example, you maybe find 10 or less than that, five, six students in one class with the teacher. You're constantly speaking to the teacher, you're practicing the language. So when it comes to practice and speaking, Idris is more of a better approach when it comes to that now. Okay, and did you have any experience, let's go back now before you went to Egypt, did you have any experience of seeking knowledge in the UK, Arabic, Quran, anything? Ah, now, Alhamdulillah, the community, from the community I've been in, been exposed to halaqat, lessons here and there. Um, but I would say most of the lessons that we had used to go in our first language, Somali, by the way. Okay. So I would study books in the Somali language. Tamam? English lessons was quite limited to an extent. Alhamdulillah, we benefited Arabic. Mainly within, if you look at the Somali community, we focus on the grammar more so than the actual speaking. Mm -hmm. So we would study books of grammar, the famous book, Ajrumiya. We had classes here and there regarding that. But speaking is very difficult because you're in a you're in a society where the language is not spoken. Yeah. So you will always you will not find the opportunity to actually practice what you learn. That's why you find a person maybe who may study, but his speaking is quite low because you don't really have the opportunity like that. That's what actually pushed me. You know, go out. I remember I would listen a lot, and that's one of the maybe we can get into that. What actually helps a person to enhance the language from that is listening. So I would actually I remember Subhanallah, I would start listening to videos. But I wouldn't be able to listen to more than five minutes. I would lose touch. Arabic, uh, Arabic, Arabic, Arabic I'm talking about. I'll find clips, you know, these small two-minute yeah, clips you yeah, find yeah. on YouTube. I'll watch that. On top of that, it has English subtitles. Right, right, right. You know? So I'll stick with that. If I find a longer video, I'll lose, I'll lose focus. And then, but then you find that the videos become longer, longer. You're able to actually concentrate. You're able to focus. Why? Because whilst you're not aware, your vocabulary list is increasing. Subconsciously. You know, subconsciously is increasing, yeah. Subhanallah. You find that you don't know if you're progressing, but in reality, you are progressing. And you will only find the progress after perhaps a long time. And it's like a building, you know, you're just building blocks. And subhanAllah, it's, it's, it's not really difficult. Yeah. So would you, would you say then, if someone who's thinking about going to Egypt, do they have to have some kind of grounding before they go? Or can you literally be a complete beginner and go to Egypt and you'll find things at your level? No, no, you, you can be a complete beginner. Mm. You'll find a place that is suitable to the, your level of understanding. But I wouldn't also recommend that. If you're able, if you decide on traveling, make use of the place you are right now. You at least have the understanding there. Try to expose yourself to any opportunities that you may when it comes to the language. Like I mentioned, listen. Listening a lot. But if you decide on leaving and you do make that move and you're really a beginner, don't be pulled down. You will find uh, you will find a level that is suitable to yourself. Now, the Marrakesh Aslan, if, if you mention a bit about the Marrakesh in Egypt, yeah. it has levels. There's a level for someone that Complete beginner, as in he has no knowledge of the language. There's a level for you, no problem. Mashallah. And you cook up, you just gradually move up, alhamdulillah. When it comes to accomplishment, it varies from a student to a student. Perhaps we can touch up on that. Let's go for it anyway, it's freestyle, whatever you want to do. Nah, when, when, when you look at Egypt, you'll find all walks of life, mm -hmm. you know? A lot of students are there from different parts of the world. And they're all doing the same system. But the question is, why is it after the end of the journey, the levels of the students True, are different? Yeah. We'll find this person, Allah Mubarak, is eloquent. This brother may have stayed in the country more than this brother, but then his language is not really as eloquent as this one. Why is that? Even though they actually follow the same curriculum. Mm -hmm. No matter what curriculum you follow, eventually it comes back to the student at the end of the day as well. True. What do you do outside of the markets? Yani, the markets is there to give you the tools. But using the tools is down to you now. 
when you leave the markets, how are you using those tools? So you find someone that's taking the extra step. Every opportunity he gets, he speaks at home. Maybe he's living with someone that doesn't know their language. So you're forced to speak to them in the Arabic language, mm -hmm. you know? They make the extra move. I remember when I was in the country around six, seven months, still a beginner. The first six months, it wasn't, I wasn't really stable because I was moving from a place to a place. So I wasn't really fully settled in. Six, down, six months down the line, I met a brother. Uh, from from I believe he was from Russia, you know those countries, Uzbekistan, okay, yeah. stand those places, the province there. When I started, when we got, when I was acquainted with his brother and we started speaking, I figured that he was in the country same time as me, due to the level of his language. Okay, yeah. Tana, it wasn't really too good, yeah. you know. Okay. After a while, I realized that the brother was in the country for almost two years. In fact, he graduated from one of the Marakis. Oh, Why is that? I was, Allah, what's the reason? I find out that it's simply because he's not really well into speaking outside. He's not really out of his comfort zone. Passing the Marakis level by level is not really too difficult. You know, that's the same for every single exam, right? You just revise maybe yeah, perhaps sure. prior to the exam, you work hard, you memorize a few words here and there. The, you maybe try to do paragraphs here and there and then you pass yeah. inshallah ta'ala. But that's not so, a measurement, the, the, the measurement shouldn't really be passing from a level to a level. You're playing yourself if that's the case. You will actually gradually graduate with the certificate along Barak, but then maybe perhaps your level is not where it should be. How do you how to overcome that? Speak no matter where you speak. My teacher used to say, one of the three things that actually, actually improves your language is speaking. It's, there's no tricks to it. Mm -hmm. Speak, yeah. It's how we will learn English when we uh, and, uh, I guess across speaking. all the languages it's yeah. the same. Speak, you know, take it to the street. There's no point being shy. Speak, make mistakes, no problem. Did you ever feel embarrassed or shy to make mistakes? You will, you will feel that, no doubt. Yeah. That's, you try to overcome that. You try to overcome that from the means of not being studying or not being able to actually learn things is being shy. You know, the Prophet, I believe it was a statement of the Prophet ﷺ, two types of people they don't learn. The arrogant one and the, arrogant one and the shy one. You know? Yani, we all know that you're here to study the language. Why be shy? The person that's sitting next to you is also learning the language. The teacher knows that you're studying the language. Bismillah. Ah. So what, what was your level uh, of Arabic before you went to Egypt? And could you hold a conversation? My speaking, one, my speaking was, I would say, almost uh, close to uh, zero. But my understanding was there, alhamdulillah. Because I would listen a lot. I would listen a lot. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't want anyone to under, undermine the aspect of listening. Okay. I would listen a lot, subhanAllah. In fact, I reached a stage where listening to English would not even actually what satisfied me. Mm. Listening to a one-hour lecture I was in English, that's not really my thought, you know. Gradually, subhanAllah, increases. So if the understanding is there, I guess the next step is speaking, you know? Because you have all the information there, you just need to now learn how to put it into sentences and go ahead with that. So we spoke about the pitfall, obviously, that some people, they really focus on one particular, whether it be Medina or whether it be somewhere uh, else, but they focus on one particular place or institute. Nah, nah, nah. Another pitfall is uh, when people think, you know what, I'm not going to seek knowledge, but when I go abroad, I'm really going to go in uh, hard. But you're saying that actually you started, you even before you that. went to Egypt, you started listening nah. to Arabic lectures nah. and things like that. Having that kind of mindset, in fact, subhanAllah, it could actually become your downfall for a person to feel that he will only study when he goes. As if he restricted to restricted seeking knowledge to a specific place. You can seek knowledge in your home, yeah. You know what I mean? It's open for you. Why are you restricted to a specific place? A person that has that kind of mindset, what usually happens is when he does leave, he won't learn anything. Because it's not what he has expected. He doesn't know. He hasn't. He didn't get used to that kind of experience. He doesn't know how it works. You will go. You have the adrenaline there. You have the passion there. You have the motivation there. Mo mo motivation dies. You know, the motivation will forever not be there. When you go to a country that you are a stranger to, you face yani hurdles, boundaries. Maybe the living lifestyle is not like it's not for you. You have to get used to it. All of these stuff is actually going to bring you down. So if you don't have the discipline, you will eventually burn out. Because you was only relying on your motivation. Yeah. Motivation will just take you so far. So far yeah, yeah. And then you burn out eventually. So get that discipline. If you're not able to leave automatically, one year perhaps you have, uh, perhaps you're trying to save up or that, start learning. There's a lot of institutes back home. You know, there's a lot of places one can actually study. Can you study the language in your home? Yes, you can. You know, try to actually be open-minded when it comes to that. Now, and then... You will definitely, 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 definitely pro and be more productive once you fly out. So you, um, I'm going to just really like try and get a bird's eye view of kind of where you were at before you um, went over there, inshallah. So um, uh, so you spoke about the Arabic language. What about Quran? 
Had you done anything with the Quran before? In it? Egypt or prior? Prior to Egypt. Before you were even, there. even, even Quran, alhamdulillah. We had study circles, we had teachers. It was never from young. As growing up, I was always in that, alhamdulillah. I was always in a community where that service was provided. So I wouldn't say that I was completely void of these opportunities, yeah. Okay. Quran wise. Uh, in fact, um, you've know you know of the area, Masjid al Sunnah. Yeah, you definitely that, yeah. very you're aware of those yeah. that 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 uh, neighborhood. That's where was that's where I was kind of raised, yeah. So Alhamdulillah, I wasn't really Quran. If you come to Quran, Egypt, as they say, they say Egypt is like Qibla to Quran. It's the yeah. direction of the reciters. Some even say that the Quran was revealed in Mecca, but it was written in Egypt. <laughs> because yes. of the fact no one is so proficient. Uh, yeah. so proficient. All the mashayikh that we know, the legends of our time, Manshawi, Khal Husari, Abd al they're all from Egypt, right? So you won't be disappointed, yani. if your intention is also to study the Quran in Egypt, you'll definitely not be disappointed. There's a lot of marakis, a lot of teachers. Alhamdulillah, you'll benefit a lot. You come with that mindset, you come with that intention, you come with that plan of yours, and then you go ahead. Nah. So first tip, obviously, seek as much knowledge as you can from where you are, right? You make use of the time that you have. Make use of the time you have. Yeah. Yani, you've decided to study, right? That's You've decided, that you've made that decision, right? It starts from the moment you've decided that. The minute you've decided to study, you study a lot of And alhamdulillah, the internet is, is it has a lot of benefits. A lot of benefits. The same way there has a lot of disadvantages and problems, it also has a lot of benefit. Make use of that. Make use of the tools that have been provided to you, you know. Uh, I would say the other mistakes that and I've seen yeah. and a lot of us fall into when they travel, specifically to Egypt, they're very undecisive of where to go, how to study, what routes to take. Mm. And what causes that, I'll perhaps, perhaps I'll say is they seek a lot of advice from different sources. And they get conflicted they opinions. They get conflicted and they get opinions. Get yeah. Yeah, and that actually brings the person down. He will start a Marquez, for example, a Marquez is mentioned to him. He will start that Marquez. As he goes, maybe it's not as he wanted it to be. So he will jump from that Marquez to another Marquez. Bear in mind that there's not a Marquez out there that is 100%. I definitely impossible. want to talk about the Marquez. I've heard names and stuff Yeah, like that. There's, yeah. There's, we can mention the names. Adis, yeah. The most famous Marquez in Egypt. Or perhaps I'll say five. Nah. Marquez of Fajr, which is the oldest of the Marrakis out there. The oldest, one of the first Marrakis that were opened in Egypt. There's Fajr, there's Lisan Arab, there's uh, Furqan, there's yeah. Ibana, and there's also Marquez Nil. I don't know much about Marquez Nil. You've never heard of it, I'm guessing. It's not really as popular as the four that we mentioned. There was another Marquez called Marquez Kalima, but it's not functioning right now. These four Marrakis, now you'll find the student who will be advised to go to a specific Marquez. He will go to that Marquez. He will stay there for a few months. He will find, يعني, it's not really my cup of tea, as they say. Yeah. And he will jump to another Marquez. After a period of time, you ask him, how's Lisan Arab going, for example? He said, bro, I'm in, I'm in Ibana. <laughs> Ibana is this what? Allah yeah. barik, may Allah put barak in that Marquez. After a while, you come back to that same brother, what's going on, أخي? how's the how's Ibana going? How's the Arabic? Wallah, <laughs> Ibana wasn't the Fuswa, I'm back in Fajr. <laughs> so after a period of time, this guy actually went through all the Marquez. Yeah. After a period of time, you realize that he hasn't really learned much. Yeah. Why? Because he has a stuck. Don't okay. look left and right. Okay. Uh, they say, they say, and um, يعني, go forward and don't look left and right. Try to seek the correct advice from a person that you trust. Make a decision through that advice and stick with it all the way. Uh. Believe you will find the results, inshallah, ta'ala, even after time. Don't be, you come across a lot of brothers, a lot of different groups. That will actually, subhanAllah, it will deviate to you in so many ways. And it will just make you unproductive. Nah, okay, that's sure. one of the biggest boundaries that I find. And I want to go into that boundary a bit more uh, later on because I actually want to talk. I mean, obviously, everything you say is just based on your own experience. Nah, nah. But I want to know about the different malakis and how you, okay. you know, what you've learned about them Tana. and stuff like that. But before we do that, just thinking about that now, uh, you, you're in the UK, you've done a bit of study, you want to go to Egypt. What's the application process like? Is there an application process? Is there anything you just get on the flight and you get there? Like, how does it work? Okay. You have to apply online? Like, no. Each application, that each market that we've mentioned, there is an application form you can apply online. Okay. But it's not really necessary. You can literally book a flight go. The most of the, the the biggest thing that a person needs to worry about is the place of living. And I guess we should touch on that as well. If he has the accommodation sorted, he goes. And then that the first week or the first month even, give that time 
to actually find a place to study. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I would recommend that he actually decides on everything before traveling. But it's not really something that you need to actually apply online. Like, there's no form of application. It's not really essential, yeah. It's not mandatory that you apply, you wait for an acceptance, then you fly like You can go and then you take it from there. It's very easy. The, every market, they have the start in the calendars there. Online, you'll find it online if you, if you write the name of the markets online. So you try to fit your time of travel to the time where the, the new Mustawa each level starts. And then khalas, you go, you sign up on the spot, you get accepted out of it. Amazing. So you recommend getting there. So let's just say the calendar starts in January, for example. You recommend getting there a month early. A month early. Because early. you can get your apartment so and everything all of that yourself, stuff. You really settled in. So you can start the same really time as all the students. Because otherwise what you're doing is you're starting a new institute and you're trying to and you're that trying that out. And, and that will for. probably leave you missing one month of studies. And, all, and you yeah. will start a month late. True. Where it was a bit of waste. I think that's really good advice. Really no. good advice. Mashallah. No. Okay. Um, so even with, do you know if COVID has changed anything in terms of? Uh... It did. It did. It did. There was the Marrakesh were closed for a long time. I think one over a year now. But now, Alhamdulillah, everything Still. back to normal. The country is literally back to normal. Okay. So literally, someone can actually go get the visa. Do you need a visa from the UK? Uh, you go to Egypt? Oh, that's a that's, that's, that's something definitely we need to touch on. That's a whole. That's. Uh, one of the things that students find problems with really? now nah, visas or renewing visas whilst you're there. Getting into the country, you're able to get a two months visa, entry visa, perhaps like as a tourist, visa. as a tourist visa. Yeah. You get into the country with a tourist visa. Once that visa expires, there's places to go where you can renew it. In Egypt. In yeah. Egypt, in yeah. Egypt, uh, in Egypt. Maybe you find difficulties. It's not really easy going. Or there's roughness regarding that topic where yeah. you be. You know, rejected at times, but it comes with the it comes with the gig, yeah. It's yeah. The full package, you yeah. take it with you, you know. But there's ways, there's ways. You renew it once it finishes. You renew. It. There's some that stay without iqama, without visa, and but that has its own problems as well. You can get away with it and pay a penalty fee when you're traveling, depending on how long you overstayed your visa, or you actually pay off. If not, you may cause issues, yeah. And to renew your visa is expensive. Like, let's talk about the visa process. Like, what I want to do before you get to studying is really take it step by step. Tell someone might be thinking of getting a flight, then the visa and things like that. So to renew your visa, expensive or not expensive? Like, how much it costs? Uh, if I speak, uh, I, I know, never... But, yeah, it's funny because when I ask a question, it's like, what, did I ask a wrong question? <laughs> like, uh... No, 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 because I'm trying, to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to connect it to my experience, what I've done. Yeah. And also what is done. Okay, you know okay. what I mean? It's kind of different. That means you did something different <laughs> to what is normal. Uh, I haven't renewed the visa, you know. Okay. I stayed with that visa the whole okay. time I was there. And you just paid the fine. And I travel. paid the fine when I was traveling. How much is the fine? We, which was a bit steep right now when I was coming here. They took from me 4,500 of their money. But I don't really know. I completely, I I completely the conversion divided by 20. 4,500 of their money? Of so their money, that's, yeah. That's not bad, that's 225 225. A guy that lives in the country, that's uh, that's very steep. Uh, okay, but that's <laughs> for three years? No, 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 no. no, no. I traveled, I, I'm, I'm right now I'm in the country one year and three months with that visa. I was in the country oh, one so year. every time you travel, you just pay the fine. And then you get renewed fresh start. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, so one year, around so one year, three months, I paid 4,700. That's an option, but that's I would funny. definitely not recommend that. That's funny. I would not recommend that. I would not recommend that. <laughs> normal people, normal, <laughs> pay, sorry, I don't mean normal people, <laughs> but normally people, would, uh, renew they'll renew it. They'll renew it every two months. They'll go to there's a base where you go. Oh, so it's not online. No, 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 it's not online. It's not. There's a base go. you go and you renew it. Okay, and that's cheaper to do. That and way. it's cheaper now. Fine. It's cheaper and more more relaxing because once you get that visa, you're relaxed now. Alhamdulillah, you can focus. You can even go to places. If you don't have the iqama, you're always restricted. Yeah, you're always worried. Am I gonna get stopped? You know what I mean? Okay. You can get randomly stopped on the street. If you get if you get stopped on the street without iqama, that causes a lot of problems. You might even get kicked out and, kicked out come back and hatta, there's okay. so many things you wouldn't want to do that you know Fine, okay. so yeah renew it renew yeah, it renew it now okay no. um, uh, and uh, okay what's next then so you got there so we've done flight, so you have the visa. you've done the flight you have the visa so now alhamdulillah really easy, really. entry visa is easy Alatol, you get it from your from your your embassy in like the country flight, like you just and you just you should turn up and you, you just turn sign up, up to, you turn what up. if you come to an institute and they say we're full do they ever say that like if you come at the start it won't be full because uh, okay. you're following the calendar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You follow them. It's impossible for it to be full if you come before the start date. If you come like a week into the that um, that month you're studying, and you say, "Listen, I'm running late. I want to sign up," they may say, "There's no class right now. Wait for the next month, okay. possibly." But I mean, you will always find. Even like I said, the only thing preventing you is that decision. 
You decide you go على طول. That's what it is literally. You decide and you keep him with it. And everything is just open. Subhanallah. Quran, everything is there. It's very easy going country. A very easy going country. Masha, so now you just landed in Egypt. Was it a culture shock for you? Was it no? It wasn't. It wasn't. Subhanallah. Me, I actually loved Egypt. Really. Straight away, or did you have to get used to it? Though? I got used to it because the love was there before even seeing the country. Yeah. Uh, okay. So when I went there, I was just an excited guy, you know. Yeah. And that excitement stayed with me throughout. Yeah. Some have the different experience where, in fact, there's a brother I was living in, from the UK as well. Yeah. He actually had the culture shock. Culture shock, where he even this he even planned on actually what, yeah. leave off and go back. But he held himself and he he was composed and Alhamdulillah he worked out. Homesickness happens. All of that yeah, will I've happen. Heard this. I've heard yeah, this it will happen. The food may actually, you know, make you sick. Okay. And the water, you know, we're not really used to actually just always drinking from bottles. Tab water back home is okay, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is so. This obviously in the UAE, you know, we yeah. don't drink. Oh, UAE, you don't do so, that. So we're used to it as well. Yeah, okay. But I'm. I didn't even consider. I didn't even think about it yeah. because I'm already what. <laughs> but did you have like a, a water system in your uh, a filter? Or something? Filter. Yeah. yeah there's. Yeah, we can. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. fix a filter in your That's kitchen. Right. But usually what we do is we just buy bottles oh, from the shop. So cheap, yeah. isn't it? So cheap. Is it? Very yeah. cheap, very cheap, very cheap. So yeah, some may not know that. They will go directly to the tap water, get sick a lot. You know, um, food, uh, we have the main the main dish that the Egyptians know is something called fool. Beans, yeah. You've heard of um, fool, huh? Fool, kushiri. Kushiri is basically mixed of different types. Pasta, rice, beans, I don't know. So stuff like that. Maybe it's not really your cup of the dish. It's not really your dish, you know. And that can actually make you sick. For some, it did make them sick and they had to leave. Sickness can happen due to the and weather change and all that stuff. Those are things that may happen. But can you find like uh, like your Western kind of luxuries? Can you get like a burger and chips in Egypt and stuff? Can you get that stuff? You can. There's McDonald's. Halal McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, that's what I'm Halal saying. McDonald's, yeah. <laughs> in fact, there's a McDonald's on the top of the McDonald's is the gym. <laughs> they just, you know, you, eat, you go upstairs. <laughs> you burn it. So, so yeah, you, you, obviously for you, alhamdulillah, it worked yeah. out okay. But you know some brothers who really found it hard. To yeah, eat. there's there's a lot. Nah. But the, the advice is stick with it and you're going to get used to it. I remember yeah. I did the same thing here. I mean, okay. Tobias, nah, there's nothing. This is the upgrade of it. That's what I'm saying. But I think when I came here, every, I, was, I was without my family. <laughs> okay. And it was a new job. No, and you just need to be patient with it because you came with an agenda. I nearly went home, I think. Subhanallah. After one month, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Alhamdulillah, I'm so glad I stuck it out. What I mentioned, what I mentioned is, when stuff like that does happen, you remind yourself of what's the reason actually. Why did you come in the first place? Yeah, yeah. Maybe for some they came across a hadith where the Prophet says, Man salika tariqan iltamisu fiya ilman, sahal Allahu lahu tariqan al jannah. Whoever takes a path of seeking knowledge, then Allah will make the path to jannah very simple. Maybe he came across the hadith, and then through the hadith, or with the hadith, he decided to actually go and learn more, you know? So whenever you face a problem, remind yourself of the hadith. It, should, it wasn't meant to be easy. The journey to the journey of seeking knowledge was never meant to be easy. So if you're gonna give up just like that, maybe this whole thing is not really for you, you know. And everyone that I've seen who stayed with something like moving to a new country, for yeah. example, they, they always get used to it. They it all, just becomes home. Just after becomes a while, home. you will get used to it. That period of the starter, just be patient. Yeah, it's a testing period. It's a testing period. Yeah, once you surpass that level, Alhamdulillah, the country is gonna welcome you. No, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I'm yet to come across someone that has been in Egypt for a long period of time. Yeah. And they said, ah, oh, Egypt is not the place. I'm yet to find someone like that. Yeah, so. You might find someone, but then if you actually ask who he was in the country, maybe one month, maybe less than that, three yeah. months, three months. Of course, you can have that, you know? He wasn't patient enough. Nah. Okay, inshallah. So now you're there, you've, you've settled, you're good. You know what to do with the visas. You're going to sign up to an institute. Yeah. One question I had actually, we hear a lot about Quran and Arabic in Egypt. Mm. Are there other kind of sciences you can study in Egypt, other Islamic sciences, or is it only just Quran mm. and Arabic? Or? Usually, usually the main focus for most of the students is Arabic and Quran. We have the Jamia Azhar. We have Azhar, those that actually plan on going Azhar. Azhar is, is open for, again, that's, it's very simple to apply for Azhar as well for those that are interested, you know? Like, in, if you're not really trying to go to the university, other sciences is quite is very limited in fact. It's very limited. Okay. That's one of the things that Saudi or other Jamiat out of Egypt has more of a advantage than those that study in Egypt. Yeah. Egypt, you say I'll say the focus is literally just Quran and Arabic. You might find teachers in the Egypt, you know what, what governs you is your pocket. That's what really? it is. What governs your if you have money, if you're financially very well put, 
finding teachers is very simple. But when you say that, when you say financial open, that's not a, it's, it's not a lot compared to UK money, right? It's not what a do you lot. mean by that? Like if someone's got a lot of money in Egypt, uh, how much do they have per month? I'm talking about those that also want to study other sciences. Right. Yeah, right? Yeah. There's prices that are fixed. You can actually plan ahead. The markets, the prices are known. Uh, the apartments, the prices are known. All of that is fixed. You can actually pre-plan. When it comes to your food, you can't really you can't really advise someone on that because it comes back to the person. When it comes to how many lessons you want to study, it depends on the person. Maybe you want to study different sciences from different teachers. Each teacher would want his own salary, right? So you can't really put a price to it. Yeah, and it's for some teachers, they actually charge a lot. So that's what I mean. Generally speaking, if you're financially not worried about your pocket and you're well equipped in that regard, you can actually benefit from the country more. So how much does it cost to rent an apartment, for example? Okay. The country, uh, Medina Tanasar is where most of the students go. Okay. Medina, there's a place called Medina Tanasar. It's a city within the city of Cairo. Okay. Um, and it's divided into different divisions. So you have um, Hay Sabi, Division 7, Hay Tasi, Hay Asher, Division 9, 10, 4.5, different divisions. Each division is known to the quality of that. Uh, okay, that's how it works. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, the cheapest, if you start from the cheapest, we're talking 2000 Again, I'm using their money. Oh, so you have to divide that by 20? Uh, we need to divide that by That's 20. Pounds. That's 100 pounds. Per month? Per month. For a one, what, like For one bedroom? Uh, one no, no, room, no, two, two, be two, two bedrooms. Two bedroom apartment? Apartment, yeah. No way. Yeah. 100 pounds And then you're, you're not there alone. You're sharing with brothers. So it's cheap, Sarah Oh, so that, wait, hold on, hold on. That 100 pounds is for the entire two bedroom. Yeah. But you normally share with the brother. You share with the brother. You like 50 pounds. 50 pounds, maybe less. Maybe you have two brothers in your room. That is like a, a meal over Piece of cake, here. yeah. That's like a dinner over here. It's very cheap, it's very cheap. So you're starting 2,000. But then, like I said, that's like, that's in a division where perhaps the area is not really too okay. good. You know what I mean? The area is not really too good. Uh, the apartment itself, it may not be in good quality. Okay, I'm with you. If we take it, if we go up a little, yeah. we go to the peak, we're talking 6,000. Okay, 6, so 300 pounds. 300 pounds. And that's a long barrack. Three rooms, very wide, very wide. Um, very nice in a nice area, quiet area, very close to the markets. You know what I mean? Even compared to London, this is... Uh, no imagine. comparison, no comparison. Right. The houses, if you look at the houses in Egypt and the houses in London, subhanAllah. With the big one in Egypt? Hatta the, the small one is competing in the UK. Allah, Allah. <laughs> so when you say three bedroom, you're actually talking about big, big, like... Big place. Big place. And for just 300 pounds, which you're sharing huge, with two other brothers. Huge, nah, nah. Do you have to share with brothers? What if someone says, I just want to go on my own? Again, it's your pocket. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some common families, you know, wives, yeah. children, so they're not going to be sharing with brothers. They're going to have their own house. Yeah. And they can't live in the district I mentioned, the 2000. So they're aiming for the 300 pounds. Even that, they can handle it easily, sir. Okay. Nah. So that's nice living, 300 pounds. Nice living, nice living. Allahumma barik. The houses, those I have seen, no. You know what I mean? The houses are amazing, mashallah. The houses, it goes into two. Either it's furnished, mafrosh, furnished, or it's not furnished. So you have to buy, you have to buy all the furnitures, everything. That costs taban, a bit. If you're there for a long term, that is recommended. Then buying a house that has all the furniture. Because the furniture, to some, they may find it old. Yeah. Very, you know what I mean? So yeah. Nah. Buying an empty flat, buying all the furniture is actually a way forward. If you're staying for a long time. Okay, what about a car? Did you uh, that I have not? I have no information regarding. No information that. Okay, <laughs> what about uh, food, like uh, in terms of cost of food? Isn't it? Again, the, co the 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 food in general is is very cheap. It's very cheap. Is it cheaper if you cook? That's open for argument. Yeah. You know what I mean? For an argument. <laughs> instead, instead of takeaways every day. Instead of takeaways every day. Um, I guess those are able to cook. They find it more more and uh, manageable regarding their finances if they're able to cook. But generally speaking, it's very cheap. It depends on your 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 way of eating, how much you take. You know, it varies from a person to a person. So what's the we're talking, then? we're talking, we're talking now. Okay, let's say for someone that actually decides to live in a house where it's two thousand five hundred, we're talking hundred and fifty, one thousand one. Uh, Nam hundred, hundred, hundred and fifty taqriba. Um, you're we're speaking monthly. You're spending almost three hundred pounds. Monthly three hundred pounds. That's not just your rent. That's everything. That's everything. Yeah. Food, electricity, what bills, everything. The bills, everything. Studying as well, the marakis. That, that's your tuition fees as well. In the, there. the 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 markets, the markets, all of that included. You you just need three hundred minimum. Month. That's if you're alone. Though I'm not talking about a person with a family. Fine. Yeah. yeah of course, of course. <laughs> you know. 
um, because you're spending what 50 pounds, we say we calculate it's 50 pounds for a room, right? The Americans takes 70 pounds, 75, 80 pounds. Really? Nah. The most expensive market is Ibana right now. Okay. The most expensive market right now in Egypt is Ibana. Ibana takes around 2,500, if I'm not mistaken. 2,500 is what? Divided by 20. Divided by 20. Like 125 pounds? Uh, nah, that's the most expensive market out there. And that is, uh, that is for everything, all the Quran Arabic that you want, or is nah. it only for Quran? Uh, only for Arabic? Like, how does it work? Do you get access to everything? Uh, access to everything. Everything. Wow. And that's, I'm talking bare minimum, yeah. Bare minimum. Maybe you want to get another private teacher on top of all of that. Maybe you want to get other classes running in your home. You know, so we're talking about bare minimum, where you just stick to markers, a Quran class, home. Wow. You know? So it's very cheap, man. Very, very cheap. cheap. Is there anything is out there that is like, what's the biggest expense that we haven't mentioned? We've obviously mentioned, is there anything we're missing, basically? Anything we forgot? Anything you forgot no, about? No, 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 no. People are going to get surprised. No, 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 no. Wow. The only thing that's missing is what others decide on doing on top of that. Yeah, yeah of course, the extra stuff. You know what I mean? The like extra, extra stuff. The bare minimum is what we mentioned. The, the, the very minimum that a person will do is he pays his bills, he goes to a specific markers, and he has a Quran class to the side. Fine. All of that, and you're, you're keeping your intake of food very limited. Mm. You know, you're actually... But even if you eat full, I get the impression food is not It's not really too much, but I'm talking about what type of food you're taking. Right. Are you trying to keep it very simple? Eat like the average Egyptian. Are you trying to eat like a person from the UK? Two different things there. Nah. Okay, so, um, you, you said you didn't have a car then, so how do you get around? Is it public transport, taxis, what do you do? Nah, there's, there's taxis, buses, and they have that small cars, Tok Tok is called, I think is. Tok Tok. I'm sure, the little, the little, Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's a little car that they use okay. where it takes you everywhere, yeah. It goes through alleyways and all of that. And so it's very cheap. You pay, cheaper. Someone, you pay a five guinea, yeah. five, uh, less than a pound. What's the, what's the currency out there? And and it just pounds Guinea, 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 Guinea. Like okay, like uh, Guinea, like Guinea. The, the older. Uh -huh. in Fusha, Guinea. Uh -huh. uh, Guinea is uh, the what dialect, the dialect, yeah. So, okay. so it's, it's, Subhanallah, it's very, very low, okay. very low. When it comes to Quran, there's markets that actually teach for free. Oh really? Nah, there's a famous market, famous market called Haramain, where they teach the students for free. In fact, they give you lunch as well. And it's open for both brothers and sisters. Either you apply, you wait for acceptance, it may take some time. Once you're in, that's your Quran sorted. You know, you stick with that and you do Arabic on the side. Alhamdulillah, you have the full package. And they, they teach, I mean, not just this markas, but generally in Egypt, even if you don't know any Tajweed, you're brand spanking new, you're a river, you can still find stuff at your You'll level. You'll find stuff on your level. Mashallah. You'll find your stuff on your level. Now. Okay, and uh, okay, so we've, we, we've spoken about that now. Um, there's one, one question that I wanted to ask you. Uh, your sisters, you mentioned sisters. If a sister wants to travel with a husband, she wants to seek knowledge as well, for example. Are the classes available for sisters just as much as brothers? It's exactly it's the same as wow. the brothers. We mentioned the Marrakesh, it has, of course, it caters for sisters. The Quran place I've mentioned right now, it caters for sisters as well. Mashallah. You know what I mean? Is it as very uh, and very open as brothers? Maybe they may find, they may find some you know, uh, limitations, limitations are, so. maybe, perhaps, I'm not really too sure on that regard, but sure. it's open for them as well. Opportunities are always there. You there's, know? there's no issues with, uh, if, you want to, if you're married already and you want to take the family, get a family visa or how, is it just individual visas? Individual or? visas. So it's just basically the if same you do, for you, but just multiplied by, multiply two, or by two or three. Kids if you have kids, if you have kids and you decide to stay there long term and you actually admit them to the Jamia Azhar, then you get a visa. Okay. Automatically, the family gets a visa at all. Is there any limit to how long you can stay there as a UK citizen? Like you keep renewing your visa online? No, that's it? the thing. You can only renew the the so Iqama no. one year. One year, but then one after year. the one year, you, you have to leave. Oh, there's 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 stuff that you do low key. You pay Fine, someone. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You pay someone middleman, as they say. Yeah. He can sort things out. But if you're if you're talking about the legit manner. You can't stay in the country more than a year. But once you leave and like And then you come day, back and add your fresh tire. Literally you Everything. come back and a week later you're okay. Fresh. Okay, so really there's no limit to how there's long someone can seek knowledge in No, Egypt. there's no limit. They just have to go to the UK and There's no back. limit whatsoever. There's no limit. Okay, let's talk about the different marakas then. Tana. Know, which ones have you got experience with? If you don't um I have experience okay. We mentioned five, right? Yeah. And Merkaz Fajr, Kalima, which doesn't really function right now. Yeah. And Lisan Arab, they're kind of the same because they teach the same book. They have the same manhaj. Okay. Okay. 
مركز يفانا they have their own curriculum they have their own books. When you say منهج, you mean like syllabus? Syllabus, I'm talking about now. Okay, syllabus. I'm talking about syllabus. نعم. منهج as in their syllabus. Whereas Ibana, for example, they have their own syllabus, they have their own curriculum, they have their own books that they have authored. Okay, Furqan is the same. They have the same. They have they have their own books, but they cannot follow the same curriculum as Ibana, as in the mindset or their way of teaching is kind of the same. It's just cheaper than Ibana. So a person that wants to study the way that the Ibana is teaching, but he can't afford the Ibana, he tends to go to Furqan. Okay, okay. Those that want to follow the same syllabus as uh, Fajr, then he has the option of choosing Fajr, which is the most expensive one. Lisan Arab is a cheaper option. It's like that. You know what I mean? If you start with Merkiz uh, Fajr and Lisan Arab, they teach the famous book, Bayni Yeah, Al-Arabiya Bayni Yadayk. Al-Arabiya Globally recognized. Yeah. And it has 15 levels. 15 levels. Starting from um, level one, a beginner, someone that cannot read, write at all, is, is completely a foreigner, a stranger to the language. They even ask you, they say, have you studied previously? Do you have any knowledge? If you say no, they're not even going to take an extra entry exam. They say, Fadda, level one. Mm. No, if you feel that you know stuff, then they do an entry exam. And through that exam, they can allocate the level that are more that are suited to your need. Um, what do they focus on more? Why do people go to Furqan or Ibana? Rather than Lisan Arab or Merkiz Lisan Arab. From what I've noticed, Lisan Arab and Fajr, they focus more on speaking. Okay. Their speaking is well, um, is more than when it comes to uh, grammar or writing, stuff like that. Okay. Whereas Iban is completely the opposite. You find that their speaking is quite low because they focus more on grammar, so, nahu, sarf, balagh, stuff like that. So now it comes down to the student now. You want to focus more on speaking or you want to focus more on the grammar side of things. If you decide the latter, then you go to Ibana. If you can't afford Ibana, you go for Qan. Mm-hmm. If you decide on working more on your speaking because you feel that well, I'm in this country, I'm trying to learn how to speak. Grammar is not really my, I'm not, that's not really my focus right now. Then you go to either Fajr or Lisan Arab. Uh, my humble opinion, for those that are only in the country a limited time, uh, or for those that don't really know much about speaking the language in general, I advise the, the avenue that I took focus more on speaking because you're here in the country limited time. Yeah. Speaking, once you go back to the country that you came from, you're not really going to speak. So you have that one time opportunity where you can actually study the sciences behind speaking, what you need to know how to actually get the ta'birat together, you know? Grammar, you can learn it anywhere. True. You know what I mean? You can find the teacher back home even. You have you have the source. Whereas speaking, you may not find that same source. So that's that's where the recommendations come. If someone knows Arabic, he can speak, alhamdulillah, his level is decent. I would recommend him to go to Lisan Arab or Fajr for that matter. Mm-hmm. I would actually advise him to go to Furqan or Ibana where he can focus more on his grammar side. Grammatical side. So it uh, depends on... Amongst other things, there's other issues, طبعاً, but that's secondary. Yeah. For those that actually want to study the Arabic we're talking about now. Arabic, what do you want to study more? Speaking, Fadbal, Fajr or Lisan Arab. Within the country, you can even find teachers that teach you grammar. You'll find someone that graduated from Merkaz Ibana, for example. And this is generally speaking. I am not specifically, that's not always the case. Generally speaking, you find someone that graduates from Ibana. But maybe perhaps... He doesn't really have that much confidence when it comes to speaking because he's what? He hasn't spent much time in. Yeah. On the other hand, you find someone that graduated from Marcus Kafajr, for example, perhaps. You'll find even if he makes so many mistakes in his speaking, he has that confidence because he spoke a lot. In the class, I've asked numerous of students that study at Ibana, they don't really get that same opportunity to speak in class because there's a lot of students in one session, from what I've been told, you know? Um, so you're speaking, the time that you speak is limited in comparison to those that are studying Fajr. Therefore, you're more exposed there than here. Does that make sense? Um, nah. Do you find some of the graduates from Ibn and Allah Mubarak, they're very solid in, the, in, in, any, in everything regarding Nahu, Sarf, and also speaking, yes. Do you find some of the graduates from Merkiz Kalima and Lisan Arab and Fajr, and they're very eloquent they're speaking at the very same time, very good when it comes to um, the written skills of Nahwa grammar, the answer is yes. Eventually comes back to the student. Yeah. Eventually comes back to the student. Yeah. Depends what you do outside Depends of the Depends what you do outside the classes. It all comes back to the student. Okay, mashallah. Nah. What, what are the kind of uh, 
structures like how many lessons of uh, how many hours do you study a day and how does it work with the, the well, you, if I speak more about um, the curriculum of Fajr because that's the avenue I took so I will I can give it from first hand yeah, experience yeah, no you problem, know no um, they teach there's five days five days in a week and it's around two hours and 30 minutes two hours and 30 minutes broken up or you just go there to like back to back la, la, back to back how, they how give many, you 15 uh, minutes break and then boom how long is each lesson or each period Two hours and thirty minutes. It's just one period for the whole day. Just one, oh, one that's period for the whole day. Yeah. Okay. You don't really come back and continue. Like every day you get two hours and thirty minutes. So imagine you're only there studying two hours and thirty minutes. How many hours do you go after that? Yeah, a of lot of hours, yeah. subhanallah. That's what I mean. The markers is there to give you the tools. If yeah. you only rely on the markers, believe you're not gonna reach far. You have the tools, you have the information. You just do the homeworks quick one, you're not really gonna reach far. So you have to now go out there. They give you the in fact some of them are, some of the Quran places they actually ask you what level have you reached? They will say, come back to us when you reach level five, for example. Because now you're able to what? Uh, construct sentences, you're able to speak in that. So now, two hours, uh, two hours, 30 minutes, you maybe perhaps get 15 minutes break, the uh, salah time, depending on the, what the, the time the salah comes in. Uh, and what they usually do once a week is a day for speaking. So the sheikh actually gives you a, um, a topic to prepare. You come, you stand in front of the class, and then you speak. I actually studied up to level 10 in Marrakesh. I used to study Marrakesh Kalima if I speak about okay. myself. Marrakesh Kalima, when it got shot, we completed our studies at home. We took a teacher and we done private. So that's another option yeah. that brothers or sisters should be exposed to. You have the option of studying privately as well. But that's, uh, is that on Zoom or something? Like no, 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 private as in the teacher comes to your house and oh, teaches really? you there. Teacher comes to you? Yeah, teacher comes to you. Wow. Now I'm teacher comes to you. Yeah. One to one that is as well. Or one to three. If oh, the, again, or now you're governing the yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. Now you're, 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 you have full control over the situation. Yeah. If you're studying privately, alone, one to one, I don't, really, I don't really recommend. Because the whole purpose of studying in Marquez is because you're able to affiliate with other students, you're able to practice with them. They say, knowledge is actually within students. It's not really from a student to a teacher. You're going to practice with the student. Maybe there's a masala you don't understand. You take it to the uh, classmate, you know. So if you decide on studying private, but I would still say, Try find a group at the very same time. Maybe the speed of the market is not really to your liking. Maybe you're trying to speed things up more. No problem. But try find a like-minded student. Team up. Do it at home. You know? But to do one-on-one -on -one for the whole duration of your stay is not really recommended. Your benefit is going to be very limited. Sure. Very limited. So what we've done was, we was a group. In fact, there was like four of us. You went together? We, we had, we, when the markets got shot, we used to study a kalima. Did you, sorry, actually, I just uh, read actually. Did you go alone to Egypt and then meet these brothers? I'm a, I went alone. I bet then you made friends there. And then I met a lot of brothers along, very okay. beautiful brothers. Okay. Faces that, you know, you just, khalas uh, is printed in history, you'll never forget. You know, from different countries. That's the other beauty thing about Egypt. Or maybe even in general, when you study abroad, you meet brothers from different places around the world and you actually have that relation with them. You came for the same reason, mm -hmm. you came for the same purpose. There's no, there's no maslaha between you guys besides the fact that you want to learn the religion. Uh, the hadith comes to mind, Rajulani tahaba fillahi ishtama alayhi wa tafarraqa alayhi. Two people, they come for the sake of Allah, they love each other for the sake of Allah, and they depart. Maybe some of the faces, I will never see them again. But alhamdulillah, we implemented the hadith, inshallah. We came for the same reason, and we departed upon Allah, solely for the sake of Allah, azza wa jal. Perhaps we'll be shaded under the shade of Allah due to this. That's a beauty, yeah. Amazing brothers and subhanAllah stories that can never finish, you know, tells that you can never actually get tired of. Uh, so that, and the brothers I met there, we were studying together in the markets, the markets got shot. We didn't really want to change the whole scenery of uh, go to another market. So we, we decided amongst us that we take the teacher that we liked, that used to teach us in the markets, and we take him home. And if we continue our studies there. MashaAllah. And Alhamdulillah, it was the best choice. Yeah. yeah. Alhamdulillah. You benefit more from that. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Allah, 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 Allah. Alhamdulillah. Um, once a person start, finishes the 15 levels, it doesn't really end there. In fact, that's probably the first, that's like, all of that you can say a foundation. SubhanAllah. The entire journey in Egypt. Is the, is the, Quran, Arabic, Arabic, is Arabic is an ocean. Yeah. Arabic is an ocean. Yani you actually start to appreciate the language once you reach a very level. You know, they say that when you start seeking knowledge, you realize you don't know anything. When you study a little bit, you become arrogant. You think you know everything. But if you don't stop and you continue, you realize you don't know anything. So you're back to square one. <laughs> and that's the, basically, that's the stationary point. That should never change now. No matter where you reach in level, you always realize that there's still more to learn. Arabic is like that. It's an ocean with no shore, you know. 
you continue, you continue. So what the curriculum, what they have is, <laughs> is what they have set in place. Once you finish the 15 levels, you go to Marhalat Ba, the second stage. Okay. The second stage is where you actually study more literature. You dive um, deep into Nahwa, Balagha, all of that. They focus more on literature where you read other texts. You know what I mean? So you enhance in, vocab in your vocab list how to do, uh, memorize a lot of ta'birat, ibarat, stuff like that. Yeah. You just continue growing, yeah, mahalla, climbing the ladder. Nah. Uh, nah, so that's an option. No, that's an option. Okay. Taking it home, studying privately. It's a little bit more expensive perhaps, but again, but down to you. Even then, even then with, them, uh, with the tuition fees, so you mentioned the 2,500, which, which uh, market was That's that? the highest, which is um, Iban. Iban, and that's Egyptian money, so it's about 125 uh, 125 pounds per month. Per month. So what are the other ones? Like, Iban is six weeks. That's the difference. Each level takes six weeks. It's not one month. Okay. So and there's not really 15 levels in Ibana. I believe, to my knowledge, 10 levels. So that money is actually lasting for a month and a half, so that's for six weeks? Yeah, six weeks. And the other one, Fajr, for example? Uh, all the other Marrakesh is one month, one month. Four weeks, uh, four weeks, four weeks. How much does it cost four, four. Fajr is just under Ibana. Just under Ibana, cut maybe um, just under Ibana, yeah. not really that much. Whereas um, Lisan Arab is like 900 Junaid. Okay. We're talking 70 oh, pounds, yeah, 70, okay. 60 pounds, like that, 60, 70 pounds. No. So, so let's say you got 125, uh, we're going with the highest. Now. We're going with really, the highest. We're really increasing the cost here. 125 tuition fees. You've got your apartment, which if you're living in a really, really, really Decent, nice average, mutawadi, you know, humble yeah. uh, type of setting. You're spend, and you're sharing on top of that. You're paying 40 to 50 pounds. Wow. Now. So, and then you've got the outside classes. How, you said that you have to pay more for them. Obviously, you bring the teacher home. How, how much is the, that? They, yeah, I mean, on top of doing, you're talking about on top of doing, studying at the institutes, you mean? Yeah, on top of, you know, you said that they, they, you, you do the institute, but then also you did the No, 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 I'm talking about those that decide on not going to the institute. Oh, so they don't go and to the completely, institute No one mixes and matches. They go to the institute and then they bring uh, the teacher home as well. You don't they can if they want to completely, but... But if no, they it's not normal. You either stick with the institute or, or you, you go private, full-time private or full-time full institute. You, or you. maybe you do full-time institute and you need the extra back in the extra to help so you get a teacher okay. to help you with your homework you know what i mean okay. i'm talking about if you get a group and you're studying together at home then you, uh, you go full-time basically wow so that the, yeah so you you don't have to pay the tuition fees at the institute anymore but instead you just pay the teacher you pay primary. the teacher direct now and how much is that roughly that one we used to pay about 1500 so similar to um uh 1500 is what so that's even less than uh uh, that's even less than iban i like that is less than iban but that 1500 is just you or is that for the uh, three of you Bla, per head Ahead. So uh, that's that's what like, we was paying. Uh, but then you may find a teacher pounds. more expensive than that. You may find a teacher less than that. You know what I mean? It varies, yeah. So it's like seventy-five pounds. Seventy-five pounds, eighty pounds. Time. So what you're saying is seventy-five. So you're saying, and, it, and let's the, round that up to one hundred. Let's round that one hundred. So one hundred for your studies. Okay, and accommodation. You said fifty. Fifty hundred and fifty. Okay. What's left? Uh, Quran, give fifty. Okay, that's two hundred. That's two hundred. What about bills, electricity, all that stuff? Uh, bills, electricity, water is very very cheap. Again, like in the car, that's not really fixed because it depends on your usage. Of course. Roughly right? average, any idea? Uh, 20? Okay. Electricity is usually more than the water. We'll say 300. But I shared on top of that. Wait, when you said 300, which car? 300 is the day currency. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Oh, forgive me. I was me. like, oh, I got it. That's where, that's where the money goes. <laughs> I've still not used okay. every My mind says, like, actually registered to what? So 300 okay. is like 15 pounds. 15 pounds, and that's between the brothers living in the house. So we don't even calculate water electricity. <laughs> so let's leave that to We don't the even side calculate there. it. Okay, what about food shopping? Food shopping? I know it can do very It can vary. Uh, what you want, uh, average? I had to give 100, but that will remain 100. Give it for transport. You know, maybe you want to go Everything places, else, you know, you want to go to a prestige restaurant here and there. 100 for your transport, your food for that month. Can't be more than 100. I doubt it. So, tu so, so, uh, so 300. Tu tuition for Arabic, 100 pounds. Uh, fifth, and that's private tuition as well. Like, what, that was each. Uh, nah, let's say private. But what? that's if you're going full time private. I'm not talking about those that yeah. are trying to combine both. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Mm. 54 accommodation each, pounds. 50 for Quran. 50 for Quran. And then you've got uh, 100 left in there, which is just for everything else, including bills and food and nah, transport nah, and nah, hanging out, whatever. Nah. And that's roughly ca rough calculation. That's so cheap. Limited man. rough calculation. And also, we took the upper limit on something. And we as well. tried, we added. So that's like 300 pounds. 300 pounds. Everything that you need for an entire month. Nah. Nah. For those that are going alone, no family. <laughs>
otherwise if a person takes a family seeking 300 it's going to get difficult yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> subhanallah it's very cheap though it's very cheap the country in general is very cheap subhanallah okay mashallah okay it's very cheap very cheap so we spoke a little bit about the uh, institutes nah spoke about timetable but that timetable how does the quran timetable work is it only private teachers or is it an institute that you can go to tamam tamam quran uh, there's institutes such as the one we mentioned al haramain mm. which is mostly what brothers go to and that takes taqriban 2 years okay. to finish yeah the to way it's structured from... the way for those that are maybe perhaps beginners okay. the way it's structured it maybe takes 2 years so why why do i mention 2 years yani is a long term the long time thing so if you're not really there for 2 years no need to recommend it right. if you know if you don't feel that you're able to stay the long full time and you're trying to finish the quran perhaps maybe haram is not really an option there's other options why does it take that long There's a is a full is a big institute where there's a lot of students there, so you, the, the the amount that you read to the sheikh is limited. You know what I mean? There's exams in place. Yani it drags yani, you know. And there's also the option of getting private teachers, where a lot of students actually go for. You find a teacher, you pay him. You don't pay much, Subhanallah. And that's one of the other things I've noticed. Not all, of course, but most of the teachers I've encountered. Um, they're very, 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 very down to earth, very humble when it comes to payments. To some, they even say, "Pay what you can." I don't really that statement actually puts you in harm. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, worse. It may... <laughs> just tell me the price. So <laughs> tell me the price. So how Allah? But it's them ones where they actually mean it. You know, yeah. you know how what your budget is. You know how much you can handle. They know that students they vary from and their situation varies from one to another. So he won't give you a budget. He won't give you a price. Because that price may be easy for this one, but difficult for this one, you know. Give what you can, and so you do that without violating, you know, without actually uh, using it as an advantage. You give what you can, but yeah. at the same time trying to help the teacher as well. Yeah. Okay. Now, so you have the option of bringing a teacher private, and the question that a lot of students they ask is, how do you actually combine between Quran studies and studying Arabic? The Quran requires time, Arabic requires time. Sure. Can I combine the two? That's questions that we That's tend really to hear. Good, yeah, really good do I completely the time I'm here? Should I just focus on Arabic, put Quran on pause, maybe continue Quran later, or focus on Quran at the beginning and then go to Arabic? All those these these are some of the questions that brothers actually ask. And um, can you combine the two? Of course you can. In fact, you should actually fill up your time table because if you now say I'm just doing Arabic, we've noticed that Arabic you're studying in the market is two hours and thirty minutes. Two hours and thirty minutes out of the twenty-four hours. If you calculate, subhanAllah, and when it comes to timing, that's actually something we need to touch upon. How do you actually manage your time? Yeah. That's where things, literally, most of the things go wrong, subhanAllah. You, you're studying for two hours and 30 minutes. Um, give or take, let's say you give two hours for homework, stuff like that, extra work at home. What are you doing the remaining time? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't fill up the time with something that is productive, the time eventually will be filled up. But maybe you fill up with something that's not really good. Right. You know what I mean? Fill it up with that which is productive before it actually gets filled up for you. With that which <laughs> will actually waste your time. So can you combine the two both now, of course? And that's your preferred advice? Like instead, instead of doing one... Uh, no, no, no. You have to. You should combine both. both okay. The Quran, ya Akhil Karim, that's a completely... Uh, in Quran will actually put barak in your time. No doubt about it. Mm. It won't actually... Yani, it's it, won't not, take it won't take from it, subhanAllah. And by al Fajr, you actually... It depends on how you allocate your time, you know? Maybe after Fajr, you set a time where you actually memorize the Quran. You have the whole day to focus on Arabic. In the evening, you come back to Quran. How do you time your man? How do you manage your time to come back to that? But are you able to combine it? You should combine it rather than just stick into one. If you say, I'm trying to stick on the, I'm trying to stick with the Quran alone. How long are you in the country? Maybe you're here in the country one year, two years. This is the country. The opportunity won't, it may not repeat itself. You know? Arabic, you're able to learn Arabic here. Quran is a life journey. You know what I mean? It's not just limited to the time you hear in Egypt. But perhaps Arabic, you may not get the same opportunity again. Very true. Keep that in mind as well. No, I'm just, I'm just going to do Arabic. Because now you're going to have a lot of empty slots in your schedule. And that can actually waste your time. So now, you should combine the two. And in terms of students there, what's the atmosphere like? Like, are there a lot of... People, everyone there is really wants to be productive or do you get some time wasters? Like, how's it work? Jameel, amazing question, subhanAllah. You know, we always say um, it's very important to have good friends, yeah. good companionship. That's a good point. But also, now you go a step further and say having a good friend is not really 
uh, is not really the only thing that you should look out for. You may find a good friend, but at the very same time, that good friend of yours may not really be productive with his time. So don't only look for a good companionship because eventually the fact that you actually traveled, everyone that you meet there are actually Allah Mubarak. They're all there to study yeah. Aslam, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Good and good and good. They have no doubt about it, you know? So don't just make that the criteria yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Go a step further. It's too wide. Though, right? I go a step further. Look for someone that what? Actually, very productive with his time. He's able to manage. He's very driven. He has the uh, he has the discipline when it comes to studying. Accompany that kind of person, because that's gonna rub up on you. You know, if you're living with a, with a person that actually works very hard and does his work on time, prays the salawat in the masjid, the masajid are around the corner everywhere. You know. That's going to rub up. Maybe you're not really that kind of person. Maybe you didn't come from that kind of background. So that's going to rub up on you. You're going to end up doing exactly what this brother is doing. But if you accompany the, a brother that's maybe lacks off, you know, you're going to lack off with him. Yeah. So look for someone. There's a lot. There's a, you find a lot. You find, a, you find guys that have been in the country for many years, but maybe not reached the level that they should have by that time. Keep that, yani keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. You're here for a limited time. Time is of the essence. You're trying to get as so much in that little time that you have, so you don't really have time to waste. You don't really have time to waste. Find a person that actually has that kind of mindset, stick with him. You'll go a long way after that. Nah, you'll okay. go a long way. Nah. Okay, we've covered quite a lot. We've spoken about the institutes. Anything else that you want to mention in particular that you wanted to speak about that we haven't covered yet? Nah. Uh, the the importance in general of seeking knowledge. Mm. Seeking knowledge, subhanAllah, is something that is very honored in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. Very honored. Those that have learned and those that have not learned, they're not the same. قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Those that have learned, are they really the same as those that learned? The answer is no. Mm. So be, appreciate the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal blessed you with this mindset of actually going out of your way to study the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. For that reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forsake you. You know, Allah Azza wa will never forsake you. No matter where you go, no matter where you end up, be it Egypt or any other place, have that intention, rectify your intention, and remember that intention actually change. As you go down the line, perhaps the intentions may not, may not really be the same as when you first started the journey. Keep that in mind. Rectify your intentions always. And Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah Azza wa Jalla will actually show you the results at the end being the left hand. Nah. Any experience, maybe not yourself, but any of your friends with families and actually moving families out there, how did the sisters and the kids find it? Was it a big change for them? Any idea or not really? Not really I've, met, I've met a lot of brothers that actually moved in with their family. Yeah. Their way of living, I'm not really too deep Fine. into it. I yeah, wouldn't really know. But has it been done? Is it being, is it being done right now? Of course, there's a lot of families that actually move. There's some that actually made hijrah and they decided to actually uh, situate themselves in Egypt. That's all subhanAllah options, but all these things you won't really know unless you see the country. So if you have the idea of actually leaving, Bismillah, tawakkal ala Allah, leave. Go see it for yourself. Everything, there's a lot of people that speak about Egypt, studying in Egypt. It's all good, but the one that has seen is not the same as the one that heard only, you know. You have an idea, you have a rough, you have a rough idea of the place, Bismillah, tawakkal ala Allah, go see it. And then decide upon yourself once you go. I think what shocks me is how easy it is. How Very easy it is. Visa, the entry requirements, the finances. What about safety? A lot of people say, oh, Egypt's not safe. Mm. What do you think? Um, Alhamdulillah, the period I was there, it was very safe for me. The, like in the element of safety is mentioned. If you keep yourself to yourself and you don't really put yourself in places where you shouldn't be, then you'll be safe. You'll be safe. Um, even the houses that you live in, depending on the district that you live in, it has a guard, a bawab, they call it, a bawab. You know, a guardian, they say, right? Yeah. That actually stands, and alhamdulillah. Um, should you trust everyone? La, that's not the case. But then that's the same for everyone, no? Same with UK. UK same is like that. You can't country, really trust yeah. anyone. Keep yourself to yourself. Yeah, and you stick to the plan that you came with, and alhamdulillah, inshallah ta'ala, you'll be safe. Khair, inshallah. Um, yeah. I'm going to end with two final questions. What is, your, what is the thing you're going to miss most about Egypt? It can be anything. It doesn't have to be to the institute, anything. Damn. And I'll ask the second one as well, just while you think about that. Uh, what was the biggest challenge that you had to overcome in your whole time in Egypt? So answer those two questions. Uh, uh, putting you on the spot. Answer, no, no, no. The first, directly, the first thing that came to mind is brotherhood. Brotherhood, yeah. Subhanallah. That's one thing I will miss. The faces, the brothers that I met. Those are no, perhaps we're not really going to cross path again. 
and the experiences that we had together, that's something that I would definitely miss. I would cherish yeah, all the way. And the second question being the biggest challenge that I faced. Yeah. A lot of challenges, but the biggest, mm-hmm. uh, subhanAllah. Uh, uh, nothing comes to mind. Really? Really? <laughs> You're making a series, I'm sure I have something. <laughs> khair, inshallah, khair, nothing khair. comes to mind. I think inshallah has given a good insight, even to myself, to be honest with you. I didn't really realize how easy it was uh, until speaking to you. So, inshallah, anybody who's thinking about going, don't miss the opportunity. Don't miss the opportunity. Arabic is not an easy subject to study. Go ahead. And it really helps you build a foundation. You do Arabic and Quran, and then you can come back and you can go study and the you, other sciences. You build elsewhere. yourself from there. It's better yeah. than just waiting for, uh, you know, I'm going to get to Saudi, I'm going to get to Saudi, no. and then you waste three, four, five years. And you could have In fact, Egypt. there's a lot of brothers that actually applied for the Jami'at and they went to Egypt. While they were in Egypt, their results, their name popped up. Okay. SubhanAllah, so they actually benefited the time they were there. Yeah. And then Allah Azza wa Jal opened the And then they can go to, to the university with no. a better foundation and, more, uh-huh. and take more advantage. What about the ulama? Like, you hear a lot that. Um, the benefit of Medina, obviously, you get haram and the ulama there and stuff like that. In Egypt, you have a lot of teachers like you can benefit from. Not scholars in terms of the major mm. scholars, but there's a lot of teachers you can take advantage from that are hidden and not known. There's a lot, subhanAllah. It's, it comes down to connections. Mm. You know, it's, it actually comes down to connections. Maybe there's, if you stay in that zone you're in yeah. and you don't really speak, and that's the actual beauty of, that's the beauty of actually coming out, speaking to people, not being shy about it. You will actually be exposed to a lot of advantages that you did not know existed. There's a lot of mashayikh, of course, there's a lot of mashayikh. If your focus is just Arabic and Quran, if that's the initial intention that you came with, I wouldn't really recommend Aslan for you to actually open field. Because that's, maybe if you didn't mention that before, that's the other problem. Where you open yourself to so many yeah, other true. lessons, you know. Aqeedah classes mention Aqeedah, I need to learn Aqeedah. He's there in that circle. Yeah. Fiqh, he's there. But then he's not really grounded with the pro- Arabic. He's not progressed with it anyway. Uh-huh. Just trying to, yeah. So he touched everything, but yeah. he hasn't grasped yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that actually, so have that intention, have that plan, stick with that plan, no matter what other, what, whatever you hear, yeah. stick with that and go ahead. Nah. Akhi, <laughs> 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 <laughs>